protracted after effects that some patients experience after having COVID-19. For most people, symptoms last only for a short time, but this increasingly vocal group of patients believe that more clinical capacity and more research is required to understand why their symptoms do persist. Well, we can speak now to intensive care doctor Jake Stewart, who contracted the coronavirus uh, after treating patients with the disease and says that his symptoms have persisted for months. And Lorraine Pickering, who also has suffered from these symptoms of COVID. Thanks very much to both of you. Um, Dr. Dr. Jake, if I can ask you first, what, what have you found? What symptoms have persisted? So the main symptoms that I've struggled with uh, has been persisting shortness of breath and chest pain. So I find now that uh, if I walk up a flight of stairs or if I lay flat, uh, I'm quite short of breath and uh, walking or, you know, very simple tasks like that give me chest pain. And before March, uh, I was doing 12 hour shifts in ITU uh, and I was going to the gym three to four times a week. So I think it's really important that we start to measure the amount of people affected by this. It's clearly uh, having significant impacts on lots of people. Lorraine, tell us what happened to you. Yeah, I originally contracted the virus on March the 15th and I had the usual symptoms. Um, after about a week, I thought I was getting better and then I got significantly worse. And I would say the worst time for me was probably weeks six to 10. Um, where I experienced incredibly bad chest pains, racing heartbeat, uh, numbness. Um, I couldn't eat. I had terrible gastrointestinal symptoms. I lost a lot of weight. At one point, I was losing two pounds a day, insomnia, hallucinations. And that went on, I think, until about week 12. And then we had a settling down into the symptoms that I'm left with now, which are largely neurological, migraines, headaches, fatigue, gastrointestinal symptoms, and again, difficulty with sleeping, insomnia. That, that you've both obviously suffered quite a bit. Um, Dr. Suet, I mean, is it possible to, to work out the cause of this? We've seen a lot, for example, about blood clots and how the virus affects so many different organs within the body. Is there any part of this that, that is psychological due to the severe stress of having been ill and all of us obviously living in these incredibly difficult times? I think the very honest answer is that we don't know what causes these symptoms yet. Um, it's very clearly affecting a large number of people. Uh, the best evidence we've got on it probably comes from Tim Spector's COVID symptom app. Uh, which shows that it's about 10% 10, 10 of people having symptoms beyond a month uh, and, and probably 2% uh, of people having symptoms beyond three months. So there's, evidence from, there's evidence from studies um, published from Germany that show that 78% um, of people who've had COVID, two thirds of which were not hospitalized, have evidence of myocarditis on MRI scans um, and the cover scan trial has reported its findings this week from Oxford, which shows that 40% of patients uh, have evidence of single organ injury and 14% have evidence of multi-organ injury post-acute COVID infection. So, so can I just check with you, is that uh, the people who have suffered the, the worst long-term symptoms, whether they're the people that were hospitalised or were for very ill at the beginning or do you think anyone who's had this virus should be looking out and potentially getting checked for other symptoms? The, the authors of the um, cardiac MRI paper are very clear that the, uh, the findings of myocarditis appear to be unrelated to initial severity of illness. Um, that's, myocarditis that's, so, is what? Just explain for uh, me. In, in, inflammation, inflammation of the heart muscle. Um, that's also reflected in what Tim Spector um, shared on a BMJ webinar into the issue. And indeed, Matt Hancock himself spoke about this at the Health Select Committee on the 8th of September and acknowledged that the symptoms of long COVID are severe and debilitating and are not well correlated to the initial severity of the infection. So it's a complicated picture 
I think most of the problems that we're running into is the fact that there is no structured system to record outcomes other than death. Um, we need to set up a way that we follow our patients and get an accurate idea of how many people are affected by these problems and what type of problems they're having. Lorraine, it's, it must be incredibly worrying for you. Have, have you. What tests have you had and have you had you know, a diagnosis and an explanation for what's going on in your body? Well, this is, this is the key thing. Um, I've seen lots and lots of doctors because at the beginning it was terrifying and completely bewildering. And I was met with absolute kindness at every stage. No one ever told me to go away. I was making too much of a fuss. But no one does actually know. Um, and you become your own health detective. But at the end of the day, we're not doctors. Jake is a doctor and we do have many people who are members of our support group who are clinicians. But the vast majority of us do not have any medical expertise. And this is why it's so important that research is carried out. At the moment, I am managing my symptoms. I do that through very, very careful pacing. But my life is completely contracted. There's no way I can, I'm a teacher, there's no way I could go into a classroom at the moment. I wouldn't last beyond the end of the first lesson, I don't think. So you're confronted with huge lifestyle changes. And as you say, it is a terrifying process. You're on an emotional roller coaster. During the day, your symptoms can change. Um, you can think you've got a handle on it and maybe excuse me, you're getting better, and then you will be hit with, you know, it's like a lucky bag of symptoms. You'll be, you'll be hit with, a, with another wave. That, that does sound awful. And, uh, I mean, Dr. Jake, the, um, I, you know, the question for many of us is going to be, should we all be getting, you know, a heart checkup, for example, if we believe we've had COVID in the first place? You know, should, we be, should the government be releasing the numbers of people with long COVID symptoms basically to warn people to be really careful about their behaviour, because you said it's not just deaths that we should be counting here. I think we can't give specific clinical advice. I think anyone who has got symptoms need to, needs to go and find their doctor. But the way that this does need to be addressed, um, multiple people have called for action now. Uh, I was one of 39 doctors who wrote a letter in the BMJ calling for more research into this. Leila Moran, the chair of the uh, all-party parliamentary group on coronavirus, has written to the Prime Minister on the 25th of August, calling for more research and for the numbers to be counted. And that letter um, is still awaiting a reply. And um, Matt Hancock acknowledged uh, our letter from a group of patients and doctors uh, at the Health Select Committee on the 8th of September, which also called for research. So. A lot of people are saying the same things. It's time now that we start to actually act on them and collect this data and set up some services to support these people. If we don't, what we have to acknowledge is that it's an, it's an area of uncertainty. So whilst we don't have that data, we need to be telling people that we actually don't know what the long-term consequences of this is. And I think that uncertainty needs to be expressed more clearly to the public. OK, thank you very much indeed, Dr. Jake Suet and Lorraine Prickering for sharing what's happened to you. And obviously we wish you the very best. I hope you do get through this period as fast as possible. Thank you.